right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and uh, in this video, we're going to make the magnetic money clip card wallet thingy majig. Okay, um, this is one of our newest templates. Uh, we put it in a mystery box, and it's going to go on sale today for everybody. Um, anyway, magnetic, which means it has a magnet in it. Okay, now. I did a lot of work, did a lot of research, did a lot of looking around, and we've already had phone calls from people that received the box. I forgot to put it in the letter. The magnet is not going to hurt your credit cards. I promise you, okay? Not gonna hurt them. Um, things like hotel keys and stuff like that, that can be erased by a magnet, but your credit cards will not be. So I promise you, this is a good, good project to make, okay? Um, so it's got a magnetic money clip on the back obviously okay so there's a magnet in there and a magnet in there um, and then it's got um, two card pockets right here right there there they are and then also you can open it up and there's more storage right there this is a great little project um, it's it's kind of fun to build it's a little bit of a challenge not much but just a little bit when it comes to placing the uh, the magnet on the back and stuff let me show you um, with how I did this it's it's I've tried to keep it as thin as possible and keep the profile of it as small as possible so I did some inventive things here um, not not that big a deal but I'll, I'll show you um, now this wallet can be made out of all kinds of stuff uh, mostly two to three ounce of course as far as thickness goes but like here's one I made out of purple and black gator and some black uh, bridal leather. Okay, so I just did like that front pocket there out of the gator. I did the money clip on the back out of the gator. Um, we had the magnets for the so those like neode neodymium neo whatever rare earth magnets. Okay, uh, we sell these on our website. They are awesome, awesome magnets. Um, but when I was researching what magnets to use, um, I was actually with, getting with a factory overseas and they were sending me samples and I told them exactly what size I wanted and everything. Long story short though, this one has a magnet that is entirely too strong on it, okay? I have snapped my finger in it too many times. I've, uh, I actually, there was one $20 bill in here and I went to pull it out and I ripped the $20 bill, held onto it that hard, okay? And then the other funny thing is, it, I'd keep it in my front pocket here, right? And then right over here is a toolbox that I use as kind of a desk. And if I leaned up against it, my pocket would stick to my toolbox, okay? Um, I pulled over a trash can the other day, <laughs> or one day with it. I, uh, I leaned up uh, across the trash can onto something else. And when I pulled away, it pulled the trash can over. So, too strong a magnet. Uh, the ones we ended up with are uh, not as strong. Um, I've held, you know, 10, 12 bills folded over with it. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not super strong at that point, but it holds them. So, introductions aside, let's get going on this. So our template is super simple, okay? Just a few pieces here. Do, 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 do. Um, I've got some two to three ounce, just regular old veg tans, what I'm gonna make this out of. But we've got just a couple of pieces here, okay? So there's our two front pockets. This is the one that goes in the back. This is the one that comes in the front. This is going to end up being the front and the back of the main body of the wallet, okay? This and this. Um, I have already marked on it. One of the hardest things with, with um, stackable card pockets is finding you know where the next one up's gonna go. So there's what that line right there is gonna portray for us. Uh, these four holes right here are going to help us put my magnet's stuck. Um, put the uh, this thing into place, okay? It goes right there. Um, and then right here is the flap for the money clip, okay? And it says on it, you're going to cut one that's this entire size, and then you're going to cut another one that just goes from here that way, okay? Um, and that's how one of the reasons, or a, one of the ways I was able to make this a little bit thinner is this is not just a big double-sided thing that was sewn to to the base of the wallet it stops being double-sided right there where this magnet is and and um sews directly to it okay um probably would have been a little bit easier to build if i had made it double-sided all the way down but again i, I worked very hard to make things thin so 
Um, all that being said, we're going to cut one of each of these. We're going to cut out two of these. And then again, we're going to cut out one of these that's full size and then one that's only this part of it. So let's get to cutting. I'm using a scalpel. Um, since this doesn't have credit card slots, you could use anything you wanted, but uh, pretty much to cut it. So I am still using a scalpel though, because that's what I've got setting around. All right, so I'm gonna cut out two of those just like that. Minus that little piece hanging there. Okay, and then really the only special instructions, like I said, are this one piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out for you just to show you. Once again, we're gonna cut out one, that's the entire length. Okay, so there's the full size piece that I didn't cut all the way through. There we go. All right, then the other one, it can help if you like, go ahead and remove your paper from your template. There we go. Alrighty. So this one, there's the worst part about working with magnets and tools, guys. Um, every time I pick up a tool, my daggum magnets are stuck to it. <laughs> so there we go. There's those two pieces. Now I'm going to go ahead and off camera, I'll just cut out another one of these, because I need two of them. And then I'll go ahead and cut out those two little pieces right there. No tricks to them, just cut out the outlines of them. When I come back, we'll have them all cut out. Alright folks, first thing we're going to do is some skiving. Everybody loves skiving, right? So i got my Japanese style skiving knife here. This is one of our uh, tools that we have made for us. Um, anyway, and the only thing I have to skive on this wallet is going to be this back pocket. Okay, because it's going to sit behind the front pocket and you don't want to feel a bulge where one stops and the other one starts underneath there. Okay, It'll, uh, it can damage your cards over time, um, but, but it also it just has a much more professional look when you don't see the outline of the, the one behind it. Okay, so um, I'm going to hand skive this because some guy on one of my videos the other day commented about uh, my skiving machine and... Apparently he's upset that I'm using a machine he can't afford. Um, so anyway, so we'll uh, we'll hand skive this, okay? And what I'm gonna skive is this side, this side, and this side, okay? Up here, where it's gonna be seen behind the other pocket, I wanna leave that kind of thick. Um, that way, um, the thickness of, of the other pocket kind of transfers to this one and it, uh, maintains consistency along the edge of leather. All right, easiest way I've ever found to hand skive. Um, on this side, okay, this long sloping edge here, I'm gonna do it like this, okay? See the, see the angle there? I don't want to do it um, straight because I don't want to go all the way to the top of the pocket. All right, and I'm gonna take my scratch all here and my, my ruler, and I'm just gonna score me a line. By the way, I'm doing this over a piece of glass. Um, I apologize for the reflection of the light on your uh, screen, but glass is the best thing to skive on. Now, did that little score. Now I'm going to go back with my little knife. This is difficult because I don't have anything to hold here. Put it right in that score and I'm just going to slice it along. Oof, I should have uh, stropped this sucker. It's jumpy. Okay, slice along. Um, let me find my strop board, or I'm going to lose a finger here. I'll be right back. All right, got my strop. So, give it a little strop here. Okay, trying to keep that angle of the uh, the blade even with the strop board. And then, of course, do one on the back. All right, now we're ready. Okay, and again, I'm just slicing down. 
And it's okay if I screw this up a little bit because this is hidden behind another piece, so who cares, right? Try to keep your angle low though because you do want to try to get a feathered edge all the way out to the edge. And uh, all right, now I'm gonna have to go back the other way a little bit here. There we go. So I did cut off the corner of it there, but again, that's okay. All right. Um, it's under another piece. Nobody cares. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to score this long part along the bottom here with my uh, scratch all, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Except I'm going to keep my angle a little bit lower so that I don't accidentally cut off a corner again. Okay. The good news is this is a small piece of leather, so if you screw up and you really just butcher it, guess what? Cut another one. It'll be alright. I know in the mystery box we sent out enough leather that probably build two of these things, so. Okay. See how we did there. Now we're talking. Barely. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to score a line on this one. I'm just going to scab a little bit off. There we go. That'll be good enough, folks. So now this will lay flat underneath the other piece. Okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do... And I don't didn't I should have gotten out the tools for way more than one part at a time here, but I I'm going to um, burnish. Well, I'm going to see that little bitty line right there. That's called creasing, and I'm going to do that on this one, and then I'm going to burnish these top edges here. Okay, that one and, and that one right there. I will be right back once I grab all the tools to do that. Alrighty, I got almost all my tools. So, that crease I showed you, um, I didn't really explain it. It is a uh, process of just basically drawing an accent line on the edge of something like a pocket like that. And it can just give it a nice professional appearance. Um, there's no real structural use for it or anything like that. Uh, since I'm making this out of veg tan, I'm just going to um, to get it wet, uh, case it, if you will, um, and then use my creaser directly on it, okay? This is the kind of creaser we have here at Maker's Leather Supply. I believe we may be out of stock right now, but I just got confirmation that we'll have a lot more in um, about a week. So anyway... Um, how these work is you got to put them right up against the edge of your of your leather. This is why I do this before I round the edges. Um, after I round the edges, you have the chance of slipping it off there. Okay, so I'm going to put it right up against the edge there, and I'm just going to give it a little push and follow my contour. Okay, and I do this first just like this, and then I'll go back and I'll kind of rub it in now in the event that i wasn't using veg tan let's say like this um alligator one that i had okay there's a crease on that too um the way you do that is you heat this up we have these handy dandy little lamps you put a um denatured alcohol in them and they burn and you just hold this over it for 10 seconds or so and that'll be about the right temperature and then you can run it along there and it'll just uh, it'll give you a heck of a nice line okay so that's what we do if it's not veg tan that we can just basically this is like tooling this line in you know so there we go so there's uh, that back piece there that back pocket and here's the front one
there we go. So those are nice and pretty. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to go ahead and edge and burnish the tops of those pockets so that they'll be nice and finished. Um, this is a very, very small edger here. It's a Barry King size double zero um, grooved edger. I've got to go slow because it is so small that it's real easy to get off track. Okay, so there's front and back on that. Here's front and back on this one. And um, I've been working on a uh, experimental solution for um, burnishing, and I hadn't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, but it, it works pretty good. Um, I've got to grab me a Use a dauber, I show this little trick here. Okay, see how that dauber is all big and stringy and hairy. And you, we're gonna burn it, we're gonna burn it a lot. Okay, I'm gonna burn it until it's about two thirds the size that it used to be, like that. Then I'm just gonna, like, that charring's not hot anymore. Okay, it instantly cools off. Uh, I'm just gonna knock that charring off, and then I'll have a much more manageable dauber. Okay much more manageable dauber. I don't have a lot of fuzzies sticking out everywhere. So here is my burnishing stuff. Works amazingly on veg tan and like leathers. Okay, little dab will do. And then I've got me a, uh, this is just a uh, piece of canvas. Okay, give her a rub. Beautiful burnish in just a few seconds. Like glass. People ask me all the time, you know, what do you use to burnish? I'm talking about like, do I use a Dremel or a little wooden tool? And I use a little bit of elbow grease and that piece of canvas right there. It works best for me. Okay, one more again. Put the good stuff on. And burnish. Oh wow, must be a ghost in here because something just fell off the other side of my table. Better, maybe I'm leaning on it and causing it to move. That's probably the most uh, plausible ex uh, excuse for what just happened. All right, because otherwise it is like five in the morning and I'm here alone, so shouldn't be anything falling around. All right, so what are we going to do now? We are going to find our original templates and our, uh, our squares. I forgot to cut the second one of these. I need to cut another one. That's all right, I only need one right now. I'm going to peel the tape off the back of my template because I need to be able to use that line right there. Okay, so what am I going to do with that line? I'm going to line that line up with the top or bottom, whichever. Um, anyway, I'm going to line it up with one side of this uh, piece here. And then I'm just going to take my scratch hole and mark the other side. Okay, very faint line there. And what that is, that is where this pocket is going to glue and sew to. Okay, super duper easy. Like I said, that's one of the hardest parts of doing T pockets or stacked leather pockets is just getting them nice and even. That's why I try to put a line on there once I find the, the perfect spot. Um, makes it easier. So, let's see if my glue jar is glued shut today. It is not. Put a little bit of glue on the bottom of this. And then we're going to put a little bit of glue 
cross that line. Trying not to get it too far out to the edges because I know that this thing's trapezoid shaped. Okay. And I could wait, you know, five minutes or so for this glue to really properly set up, but I'm not that worried about it. I'm about to sew it anyway, right? Okay. I just want to make sure that the bottom of my card slot is right on that line. Okay? That way when I put the other card on it, they're perfectly parallel to each other even though they have this rounded top. And then that rounded top also helps that if they're not 100% perfectly parallel, you, they, you can't tell. Okay? And I'm all about hiding a mistake if I can. <laughs> all right. Next thing I'm going to do is use my um, my pricking irons to uh, punch some holes there, and then I'm going to hand sew it. But I need to move this piece of glass because I'm not going to pound on this. It's the only one of these I've got. So give me a minute, and we'll be right back. All right, so I got my rubber pad out because that's what I like to use with my uh, stitching uh, irons. Okay. I'm just going to take and draw me a little line here. You could use a pair of wing dividers or something like that, but I happen to have this ruler already out. Um, draw me a little line there. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch. No, eighth of an inch from the bottom of that pocket. And now I'm going to take my pricking iron that I swear I had out. Whatever. Here's a six stitches per inch. I'm going to use eight uh, uh, stitches per inch on everything you can see, but since you can't even see this, it'll be all right. I'm just going to take them, place them on my line, give them a whack. As long as they go through the bottom, we're good to go. Okay, and I use this rubber pad under here because I... Uh, I did a video recently about cutting surfaces and stuff like that and uh, this rubber pad allows the irons to go through the leather and into it safely okay um, cutting boards like this or your self-healing cutting mat things like that that's it's too hard for these these uh, delicate tools okay these are made for leather and soft materials and um, Anyway, so that's why I use the this pad right here. We, we've got these. Um, we're out of them right now, but I'm getting with the company that we get them from. What this is, this is conveyor belt material. We buy a giant roll of it, and then I cut it on my, uh, my saw um, into one-foot squares. But I've found I love this. Um, for years, I used a Tandy Poundo board, and Tandy Poundo boards are great. Don't get me wrong. They are, they are very high-quality rubber. They last forever. Um, I like this though because it offers the same tool protection and everything, but my uh, my irons once they're in there they come out a lot easier because this is kind of a I don't know maybe like a nylon based as opposed to solid rubber. Um, those poundo boards with the solid rubber it, it really uh, sticks in there. Okay, now I'm gonna stitch this real quick, uh, just hand stitch it. Um, this entire project will be hand stitched and. Uh, yeah, I'll move the camera and everything, and we'll talk about a little bit of hand stitching. All right, thunder's really rolling out there. Um, so, you've already seen my holes. Now, I recently changed how I do my hand stitching, okay? Um, it's the saddle stitch, of, of course, so I have two needles. One's going to go each direction through the leather. Um, but I have. I've recently changed how I do it. Um, my stitches before looked looked fine. I liked them. Um, they worked for years. I won some contests, you know, that, you know, people even talked about how nice the stitching was on my project, stuff like that. But I am constantly seeking, you know, new, better. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're not self, if you're not improving all the time, then, well, then what are you doing? So what I'm going to do is I go now I used to come uh, through the front side of my project first, but now I go through the back side first. Okay, and I'll pull that sucker through. Then I'm going to put my 
other needle in right in front of it and then I'm going to there's a big loop here now and I'm gonna push the first needle through that loop and when I do this it's gonna create a very very nice stitch okay so I am uh, all I'm doing is I'm opening up that hole from the front side because I can't really see them on the back I could have given those those pricking irons another whack and gotten it you know really reamed out that hole but I didn't do it so again come to the back from the back put this one in in front of it up here cast through the loop there and pull tight all right and uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna move the camera and set it up from my side so that you can see from a different angle too okay so I'll be right back okay now, my hands are going to be in the way some, and I apologize. But again, I'm going to push this front needle through just to open up that hole in the back. I'll push the back needle to the front. Put the front needle in just in front of it there. Push this through the loop. And pull tight. Okay. Now, really... Um, this kind of makes a, a stitch that looks a little bit zigzaggy and it really has a nice appearance to how the stitches lay. Um, I like it a lot. I, I like it uh, more than my old method, um, which I've talked about on quite a few videos, but um, to each their own. Uh, the biggest thing with stitches is consistency. As long as you do everything the exact same on every stitch, to include like the angle I pull this back and stuff like that, then you'll have nice pretty stitches. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stitch up the rest of this this line here, and then uh, when I come back, we'll move on to the next step. Another real quick one about hand stitching, folks. I've come to the end of my stitch line. Okay, all the holes are used up now. Now, how do I tie this off? Um, a lot of beginners, to include myself, uh, would put end up with both the threads on one side and then tie them in a knot and everything, and that is just absolutely wrong. Okay, um, I, I get it. Uh, you know, if you're not able to learn from someone, how else are you supposed to figure it out, right? So anyway, here we go. I'm going to back stitch. Okay. So I'm going back through the last couple of holes that we did. So there's one hole both directions. It can get a little bit difficult. Okay, and then two holes. Alrighty. And that is how you tie off your stitch or end your stitch is doing some back stitches. Alright. Now, another neat little trick I'll show you. I'm gonna grab my scalpel. When you go to cut your uh, your thread off. Um, some people will cut it and then burn it with a lighter, and that's not a bad way to do things. Um, but the the problem can be that you end up scorching your leather. Okay, and we don't want to do that. This is pretty leather. So what I'm going to do is, oh, and then the other thing is, is um, if you try to cut it too close, then you could actually cut your leather. So here's what I do. I learned this from a braider. Okay, I'm going to stick my knife right there at the base of this thread, and then I'm going to move the thread against the blade. And when it cuts off, it's nice and even. No burning needed, no trimming needed, it's just there. Okay, if you do it that way, then you're not moving the knife and, and possibly, you know, accidentally cutting a stitch or your leather. You're moving the thread against the knife blade, and it works out. So, there you go. All right. So, we're back over here on our work surface. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is just a small detail here, but it works out. I've just got a piece of steel anvil under here. I'm gonna take a leather worker's hammer, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be some fancy hammer, but what it needs to have is a very, very smooth surface, okay? Very smooth, very flat, all right? I, um, one day, my ex-wife had not this hammer, but another hammer that I use and she was hanging pictures with it and I blew a gasket. <laughs> it took me hours to sand all the nicks and everything off of that. 
And the reason you want it so smooth is so that you don't damage the leather and mark up the leather when you're doing things like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tap down all these stitches because, again, they're underneath another piece of leather. I don't want to feel them through it. So super easy. Just going to go down and tapity tap tap. Okay, and I did that on a piece of steel so I don't have to go back and do the backside. It, it smushed it in just fine as it is. So now those are much less pro, pro, uh, pronounced on that layer because um, they're pushed down into the layer. Okay, so next thing is we're going to glue this piece on it. Okay, and then we're done with the front side of our wallet uh, for now. Okay, so I'm going to take my fingernails here and I'm going to mark this one that we just sewed on there, I'm going to mark right up underneath the edge of it with my fingernail. Under the edge of it, not at the edge. Okay? I'm going to do that on both sides. And what that does is that marks where my glue should stop. I don't want to glue past that point. Okay? Now, I've had to say this before. When I use the word glue, I mean contact cement. That is what I use. Um, the contact cement we sell, we have made in a... Uh, uh, by a company in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and it is some sticky, sticky, sticky stuff. So, I'm just going to glue right around the edge there, and I'm going to get the back side of that little card pocket there. Okay. I'm just going all the way around the edge. Hopefully, I'm still on camera for the most part. Okay, and again, I've got my little marks. I don't want to glue past those, or you'll see glue on my finished project. And we've discussed multiple times how unprofessional that is. Okay, so I did that. And now on the back side of this, I can just do glue all the way around all three sides. Obviously not the top side, because we need a card to fit under, into it. But the other three sides. And again... You can wait two to three minutes for this, this glue to set up. If I'm doing a huge area, I normally will. Um, but just doing the edges of card pockets and stuff, I just go ahead and stick them together. Um, and they'll be fine. Okay? So. Here we go. I'm going to just do the bottom corner here. Start there. Line it all up. And I want this sucker just as flat against the bottom line as I can get it and then I'll press everything else together okay now you can see here where this didn't perfectly line up that's okay we're gonna do sanding and trimming when this whole project is done and that'll be all right okay now again I forgot to cut out my second one of these uh, big pieces so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera right quick. And when I come back, we're going to start working on the area of the, uh, where the magnets will go. Okay. All right, folks. So I did cut out this other piece here and also on this short piece, which is actually the outside piece of the, uh, the magnet. It's this piece right here. Um, I went ahead and put my, uh, my little maker's mark there. Okay. Um, so now what we have to do is sew up the magnet inside of one end of this and then we're going to sew the other end down to this so that when it comes over it'll be just like you saw on the other one. Okay. Now here's where a little bit of science is going to come in. Okay. The first thing I need to do is you see those four little uh, holes on your template. Um, the template specifically says don't punch those holes. <laughs> Um, all we're going to do is use those for a little bit of a mark here as a reference point because that's where this thing is going to stick down with the magnet inside of it. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a piece of tape, a double sided tape, kind of right in the middle of all that because one of my magnets is going to stick to that double sided tape. Now, I promise science. Um, Magnets have polarity, okay? So if we stitch this thing into, um, into the leather and then stitch this one into this end of the leather and then the m polarity does not match up, then it'll never close like it ought to, okay? See, when I turn this over, it doesn't want to close. They resist each other. They're magnets. So what I like to do is I'll take my, my magic marker here and I'll just draw little arrows on each magnet to make sure that I end up with them 
sticking how they ought to. Okay, so this one will be here. This one will um, stick uh, or be inside the leather, and when it folds over like this, it will stick down just like it should onto that one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that first one down. And I'm going to put it pretty much right in the middle of all those um, little marks I made. Okay, I'm not going to press it down until I know I've got it exactly where I want it. There we go. All right. Now, the other one is going to go in between these two layers here. Okay, and I'm going to lay it out just like this so that I know what I'm doing here. Okay, this is the inside of the flop over. All right, so I'm gonna take the other one, take a piece of double-sided tape here, and I'm gonna put it to where it is evenly spaced. Uh, it'll be a quarter of an inch, is that even spacing, just so you know. Evenly spaced here, here, and here, okay? And again, I'm not gonna push it down until I know that it's good and straight and right in position. A little bit far. There we go. Now, if you're not 100% sure about yourself, um, which I, I, I will, I'll retest this six times before I stick it all together just to make that gum sure, but this is what we want right here, and it'll, it'll close down like it ought to. Okay? So, I got it stuck there, now I need to stick it to this one, but I also want to glue all that leather together, okay? Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. So the way I'm gonna do it is I've got some uh, some flat nose pliers, and I'm gonna put my, my, um, my contact cement all over, Let me make a little mark here, it'll help. Where did my pen go? There's one. This again, this will tell me where to stop putting my glue, okay? Um, but I'm gonna put glue all over this one here. Well, I say all over. I want that double-sided tape to hold the magnet to it. Um, the glue will hold the magnet, but um, that double-sided tape does a real good job. Okay. But all these edges, I want to make sure I've got glue on. Again, when I say glue, I'm talking about contact cement. Ooh, it. So, see what just happened there? That rolled over, we've got glue on that. I'm going to let that dry there. And then I can just roll it off with my finger, okay? It turns into kind of like a rubbery um, texture. Uh, if I try to wipe it off while it's wet, I can assure you I'll get a big old brown spot there where it just takes, you know, oil from my finger and whatever else and spreads it all over the leather. <laughs> so, I'm just going to let it dry there. Now, I am going to give this glue some time to set up. Um, and when I come back, it'll be about three minutes, three to five minutes or so. And then I'm going to use my pliers and pinch those together. If you don't have the pliers, that's fine. Um, I may also give it a, just a little bit of a spray of water on the outsides. And what that'll do too is it'll help me be able to kind of wet mold it around that, um, around the magnet so that you get a better sew line and it just looks nice and clean all the way around. All right. So, uh, again, I'm going to pause the camera, and uh, we'll come back and stick those two together. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, backing off my tape here. Okay, and I'm going to stick this sucker together following that line that I put on it earlier. And I'm going to press it together gently just to make sure that everything's lining up. Now... Very important, I don't want to press down from the top only because as this stretches over the magnet, it would make this side smaller than this side, right? Because it folds down over it. So I want to press both sides down at the same time, okay? So I'm going to get my fingers underneath there 
and press both down at once. All right, and you'll start to see the outline of your magnet in there, and that's exactly what you want. Okay, now once I've got that a little bit pressed down, I'm going to take my, uh, my pliers here, and you can use other methods as well. If you don't have these pliers, uh, we have these pliers on our website. They're absolutely amazing. Um, I, I used to uh, wonder what pliers like this were for until I started using them, and now I know. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going around it, and of course it is a little bit difficult because there's a magnet inside there, and I'm using metal pliers. Um, so, you know, you have a, a little bit of a um, something to work with there. Oops. Uh, also, like I said, this is now kind of dry right here, so I'm just going to take my finger and rub on it, and it'll start to roll away like that. Okay? Again, if you do that while it's wet, you're going to be in trouble. Let, let it dry a little bit. You don't, not completely. You don't want it to get hard on you, you know. Um, you just want it to, to set up and become a little bit more of a rubbery solid. Okay? And you can get that off like that. A little bit of stubbornness there. I'm going to gently use a fingernail to uh, to get that off. There we go. All gone. All right. Now I got to start sewing again, right? Because again, this is going to be like this right here. Where's that? The end of this piece of leather is going to butt up against the magnet over here. Okay. And then it'll all fold over like that, but I don't want to do it while this glue is not, while this isn't sewn together yet, okay? So, now I'm going to take my, uh, my irons and I'm going to do a stitch line that goes all the way around this, okay? So, not too difficult, but there's some considerations to keep in mind. It doesn't lay flat anymore. So we got a couple of things we can do. One is we can put it up against a piece of leather like this and uh, and make our, our uh, sorry, use our, um, sorry, nope, gotta go this way. <laughs> uh, and you know, to get these edges right here, or we can even just move it all the way out to the side of our, our rubber board, but my rubber board's a little thick, so I'm gonna do it like this, okay? Um, I do need to create a stitch line, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my creaser that I had out earlier and just kind of put a light line in there so that I know where to put my um, pricking irons. Alrighty, now I'm going to start punching holes. Now, um, I only need to punch holes really up to where the bottom part of bottom leather stops because then we're going to stick it to this one and continue doing our holes. So unless you want to do your holes twice in some areas, you only have to do them until you get to that point there. Okay, so. Oh, I wanted to grab my eight stitches per inch. I'll be right back. I don't want to use a six. I want to use an eight. All right. I found my eight stitches per inch uh, pricking iron. That's how I like to, uh, what I like to use on wallets and stuff like that. I just put a piece of my template up underneath this other side here uh, to kind of help keep it even. And we're just going to knock a lot of holes. <laughs> Um, nothing, nothing special about it. Like I said, we're going to go up to the point where that other piece of leather was under there. Okay. And then that's, that's where we're going to stop, um, on both sides of this. If you notice, I am hitting harder. I don't want to have to pre-stick my needle through on the other side. Um, like I was doing earlier. Okay, so we got one side. I can do this end down here. And 
and I'm going to round these corners off just the slightest bit so I'm not going to go all the way out to the corner. I'm going to leave it to where the stitch will go around. Okay, now on the other side, I'm going to make sure and start at the same point. Okay, now, using the exact same method I did earlier, I'm going to start stitching right here and go all the way around to here where the other, again, where the other uh, piece of leather ends, all right? And then I'm not gonna back stitch or anything else like that. I'm gonna leave my, my threads long because I'm gonna stick it down to this one and keep on a stitching, okay? So start here, work my way all the way around to there and then once I glue it together, I'll, um, and I'll, I'll do this on camera, of course, um, but I'll just keep on stitching like that. And then my last stitches will actually be to hold the end of that leather on there like it ought to be. Okay, and that, um, you know, and, and it'll be stuck down to this so that when I fold it over, that is completely sewn in and you won't see the edge of that. Again, I was just trying to deal with the thickness and that's why it's that way. Okay, so. I'm gonna start here, so all the way around to here, and when I come back, we'll stick it to that. Okay, so I got that all stitched up, just like we talked about. See, there it is, okay. All right, um, and then I left the needles on it. I just, the, the last stitch um, that went through both pieces, I just left it as is. I didn't back stitch, didn't nothing, because I'm gonna continue on stitching once I have these two pieces put together, but, I gotta get ready to do that. So I put a double piece of double-sided tape right here on my uh, uh, magnet, okay? Now I need to glue around the edges of this, just like we did before. Um, remembering again that that piece right there is gonna butt right up against that magnet there, okay? And then I need to glue around the magnet so it has something to glue to, okay? Now, this is where it gets tricky. If you want to be ultra safe, you can use a piece of quarter inch double-sided tape instead. Um, but I, I want to use glue and I want to show you how to use glue to do this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my normal glue brush aside because I am not that kind of accurate with that thing. But this thing, okay? Just a little um, spatula, I guess you can say, for glue. Um, and all I'm going to do is just put glue just right up along the side of that magnet. Okay. Trying very hard not to get glue where it would show after that other piece is applied. Okay. So I'm just going around and I want to make sure and stay within a quarter of an inch, even less. Okay, quarter of an inch is the absolute most I can get away from that magnet. It's okay if it takes you a minute to do this. If you don't have a fancy little spatula like this, that's okay too. You can use a plastic knife, you can use a uh, Q-tip, you can use a paintbrush. All kinds of stuff will spread glue for you. Things like a paintbrush though, you just have to be prepared that when you're done, you will be throwing your paintbrush away. So don't use one of your good ones. So there we go. Got that on there. Now on the other piece, I don't have to be quite as careful. So I'm gonna go back to my regular glue brush. get to sticking. Now on this part where it butts up against that magnet under there I'm just barely gonna get some glue right there on the edge of it. Okay, just barely. 
And then the rest of it I'm going to do just like I have on everything else and just go around where that magnet's going to set in the middle of that. Okay? Come on, camera. I'm sorry. I forgot I zoomed in so much. Do, 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 do. All right, um, just like earlier, I'm going to let this set up for a few minutes because once I place it, I want it, I don't want goo to seep out and stuff like that. So give me a minute. All right, real quick, I'm super glad that I hadn't stuck this on there yet. Um, I forgot something very important. I am now going to trim and burnish these edges um, so that they'll already be done when I stick it down there. And... Um, yeah, and then I won't have to fight to do it, you know, while it's up against the rest of the project later. Um, no different than what I did earlier to burnish the uh, edges of the card pockets. So I'm going to get that done real quick, and then when I come back again, we'll stick that sucker down. Okay, so now that I got that fixed, um, got my edges nice and burnished, um, this thing is ready to stick together. Okay, so I am going to but the uh, that piece of leather up against my magnet I'm gonna pay attention to where my little um, marks were that I did through the the holes on the template Oop, hang on I'm going to remove my double-sided tape from my magnet or well the backing off of it leave the tape on the magnet this right here is what happens when you don't have fingernails <laughs> okay so Butt the leather up to my magnet and center it. Okay, and I'm going to lightly press down here to make sure that that magnet is centered. Um, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to take my same pair of pliers and I'm going to go around pressing everything down. Same concept as before. We want to press evenly from the back and the front so that the thickness of the magnet is shared between both layers of leather, not just uh, the one, okay? Now, here's where it gets a tiny, tiny, tiny bit tricky. Not super tricky, just a tiny, tiny bit, okay? Um, I'm gonna take my pricking iron and the very first hole I'm going to do our very first area is of course where the stitch is going to continue around right so I'll go ahead put it in there give it a whack now I need to make this sewing go into that naturally okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my back needle they're all tangled up because I did all my burnishing and stuff. I'll take my back needle and go ahead and come up through the front between the layers like that. Okay. So there it is. Then I'm going to take my front needle and do just like I always would. Push it through there. Go through both layers. Okay. And then of course to make the stitch look like the rest of them I got to cast this needle underneath it. Oops, that didn't quite cast underneath. There we go. And pull tight. I just, I did that first. I did it right now because I don't want the glue to get any more dry than it is. I needed to be able to peel that back away from the leather just a tiny bit. Now I'm going to go around and do the rest of my uh, stitching holes. Okay? So, um, following that line that I made earlier, I'm just going to get her done. Now on this side, 
I'm going to start back here where I've got, I have one hole that was off of that second piece of leather earlier. Okay, I'm going to start back there. That way I can kind of put my, if I have extra or less space, I'll put it down here in the corner. All right, as far as making all my holes line up uh, once we've gone all the way around our project. Okay, now I'm going to put one more right there in the corner. All right, so there we are. And I'm just going to keep on stitching around. When I get back to where it meets up with the, uh, the other one there, there's actually not a hole right there. I'm going to very carefully take an awl and go through both layers. Um, let me show you right quick. Found my all, folks. I'll be right back. Found my all. Okay, so up here where that very first thread is, okay, I'm going to carefully go in here with an awl and go through both layers of leather, being careful not to um, pierce the stitch that's in that hole, okay? Because from there I'm going to go across and stitch that end down. Alrighty. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I'm going to scrap me a line because otherwise I guarantee you I'll do it crooked. We don't like crooked, do we? Just use the hole here. There we go. Okay, so when I stitch all the way around, I'll go back to that original hole and I'll take a right and go all the way to the end. I'll go through this hole down here and then do my back stitch from there. All right, so when I get back, that'll be sewn up. All right, so there it is, all sewn down. Now we need to kind of stretch and play with this leather here a little bit to get it to lay naturally as it's closed. And it won't want to at first, all right? But here's a little tr tr trick you can do. Give a little spray of water right there on that fold and it'll help stretch that out a little bit so that it'll lay down like it needs to. Okay, and then you can always put it underneath something or something like that to, uh, to set for a while. Now, what am I gonna do next? The last part, I'm gonna sew these two pieces together. Okay, but first I'm gonna glue them, of course, on three sides, okay, where the cards uh, cards would fit in on the upside here, I wanna leave that open, because like, like I showed you before, you can stuff other stuff in there if you leave that open. Um, I'm gonna glue it together right quick, and then I'm going to clip the corners uh, of this too. I want them just a little bit rounded out, okay? Um, and then that's it. We're going to burnish the edges and be done with this project. Um, it's a great little project. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's, um, yeah, these are, uh, these are a great one. So anyway, I'm going to just glue around these three sides. There's no tricks to it. It's just gluing those three sides. I'm going to charge my camera a little bit because the battery's not lasting very long today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I'll stick those together, and then I'll show you when I clip the corners a little bit. All right, charge the battery up a little bit. I'm at back at 30%. That's enough to get this done. So here we have it glued together. Okay, again, simple operation. Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't. There wasn't anything special about it. I just glued them together on three sides so that it stayed open there. Okay. Now I have my handy dandy little craft tool corner punch. I love this tool. Um, we sell it in our store, but of course it is a Tandy product. You can get it there. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna round the corners of this thing, okay? There we go. Okay, 
go. And I'm not using the entire tool. This is the smallest one. They have three different sizes. Um, I'm not using the entire tool. Like I'm not trying to make a huge radius there. Um, I'm just making a nice pretty rounded corner. So there it is. Okay, now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to make more stitch holes. Um, I'm gonna use a pair of wing dividers this time just because it uh, it's just smarter to do um, with the thicknesses that I'm dealing with now. So I'm gonna take me a set of wing dividers here, get them down to an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a tiny bit more. And I'm going to draw me a line around this sucker. Okay, be very careful because it doesn't lay flat anymore, right? So just be careful and keep your stuff straight. You'll be alright. Now on this top corner, I don't want to go too much. Whoop, FedEx is here. Be right back. Sorry about that. FedEx is bringing me some much anticipated items today. Okay, now I'm going to take my pricking irons and I'm going to go around it just like I have before. Okay, I have to be very cognizant though about that area right there. Okay, because if my pricking irons go through there, I don't want them to get into that money clip there. So we got a couple of choices. One, I'm going to fold that money clip down as much as I can. Then I'm going to hang it off the side of my uh, my board. But I might have to make my board go up a little bit higher because I want this to lay flat. If it's like this, then my stitches will be like that. Okay, we don't like angles. We like straight. Okay. So, going to keep going. Do to do. And I'm just going to... I'm going to start right here, even though that um, line curves around there I'm gonna start right here and we'll go back with a smaller pricking iron and do the curves or even an awl um, and that way uh, you know because the big big pricking iron here won't go through go around that corner Okay, move over here to the edge of my board because that magnet, of course, keeps this from being straight. Again, I'm just going up to where the rounded corner is, and then I'll go back with an awl and make these lines connect. I know there's a lot of ways to be super precise going around corners and all that. I um, It's not that I don't care. It's just that I know I can make it work, and I know that I can make it look good. So, all right, so again, I'm going to push that magnet back on the back and uh, keep going around here. I'm gonna fudge this one just a little bit because I don't want to cut the edge of my pocket. Okay, hang on, and I'll show you what I mean. Right in between those teeth there is the edge of that pocket, and if I'd perfectly lined it up, then it would have um, it would have uh, cut the edge of that pocket, and that won't that doesn't look right. Of course, neither does the stitch line I just made by doing that. So I need to 
correct that. I've got a, a one that's completely just out of line with the others, so should have paid more attention. Okay. I'll fix it with an awl. Okay, and then again, as I go around these corners, I'll just haul me in a hole as I go around. So there we are. I'm going to start here, go all the way around, and then just do a couple of back stitches, and then we're going to do some etching, and this sucker will be done. All right, folks. So got her all sewn up, all the way around. Okay. Again, that magnetic money clip is going to lay down, you know, with age and time, and I'll, you know, put it under a book or something like that um, to get it to, to set down. Um, now I'm just going to do my edge work here. Uh, I need a larger edger than what I was using on just one layer of, uh, of that. So this is a Montana edger number four. Just happened to be one that was laying on my desk there. So I'm going to go ahead and just do both edges or both sides of this. Now this side is going to be a little bit more difficult just because it won't lay flat again, but um, that's fine. I've, I've worked around that before, haven't we? Oof. You hear all that rumbling, that's SpaceX. It's about 40 miles away, but that's how good we can hear it. Like Things are actually rumbling in here, glass is moving. <laughs> because Elon Musk wants to go to the moon. All right, so there we go. Now I'm just going to burnish these edges just like I did all the others, and this one's gonna be done. Um, again, I, I don't really feel the need to make you watch me do it. Uh, so, pending any questions, um, that's it. That's the that's the whole kit and caboodle. That is the magnetic money clipper wallet. Uh, if you have any questions, speak up now. No, no questions. All right. Well, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and uh, hope you had fun. Thanks.